Hello everyone, welcome to the virtual webinar space for PD for IGV, especially all the team leader and team members that is working for sales itself. So hi, I'm the host of the day. I'm Shabelle, your MCVP PD um, of Isaac Malaysia. So today's topic we're gonna talk about lean PD. Okay, so what that uh, lean PD really mean is that the content that it would be covered is uh, doing more with less, which is how can you be more effective in doing sales. And then another part of lean PD is also other than effectiveness, is about how can you actually differentiate sales and also account management. And with this differentiation, then we will look into sales. How can you actually have a more uh, process uh, base in terms of mapping what's the things that you need to do in sales itself. So... Doing more with less means how can you actually start to take care of all the processes from A to Z in a more effective manner, okay? So for people that it's really have a few months uh, experience doing sales in Isaac, especially for PD for IGV, you will know that there's a lot of things you need to do, right? Start from market research, even until the end, when you're signing MOU, you get the sales in. It doesn't mean the end. You still need to continue the entire process until the partner actually and the partnership with us. So it's literally everything that you need to do since pre-attraction until uh, post-experience. So doing more with less means that you need to take care of sales pipeline. That's the first thing that you need to do. So uh, working in Isaac, one thing that you have to know is that um, your sales one, which is your goal, how much you actually need to get, okay? Based on your team leader or based on uh, the analysis with FL itself. So in this case, for example, it's 100K, okay? So you get a goal. As a PD member, I need to achieve 100,000. Another thing is also, after you break down your, uh, your, you get your overall goal, the next thing you need to break down into how many MOU you need to get signed. Okay, for example, after you do market research, then you are targeting four MOU to be signed in your market itself. With that, you need to break down into these four different accounts. Accounts mean uh, partner, okay? So after you break down, the next thing you need to do is sales partner. So you need to take care of the entire partner, looking into how many meetings you need to secure, how many leads you need to do in order for you to get four MOU signed. Second part is, after you break it down, then let's be more accounts focused. So just now we were mentioning you want to get it from four MOU sign, right? So next thing you need to do is to actually break down the goal as well for this four account. How much you are targeting from each account based on your market research. Then you will put down the hours that you will invest as well. This is very crucial because as Isaac girls, you need to actually manage your time, not only for Isaac, but also your study and other commitment, right? So it's very important for you to actually break down. So how many time you have in Isaac in total, in a weekly basis, and then you also break down. For example, the big, uh, biggest account, it's uh, 50,000 you are targeting. Then it makes sense logic, uh, logically, you should put five hours for this account. So it goes with this. So doing more with less means not only smart in uh, backward planning or even um, strategic planning, how many accounts you want to get. It's also about self-management, about how much time you want to invest in different accounts as well. After you manage all these deep part. Uh, in terms of sales pipeline and also account management, the next thing that I would like to ask you is that if you really have 10 hours per week for Isaac, how can you actually not spend your time reaching users' information about companies and starting to nurture some date account and actually go to the sales part? Date account means the accounts that have a very high success rate, 90%, you are sure after market research, they're going to find you money. Okay, that's the, 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 the best uh, alternative right to get a date account and really sit down with them to talk about your projects so that is where we have the entire sales funnel that put into a process mapping so let's look into the first 1.0 uh, in terms of how to do it so this is the entire funnel okay how you should actually manage sales so starting from understanding and their prospecting it's all about the number of market research that you've done after that you look into initial approach which is the lead contacted and also lead follow-up and then you go with pre-meeting plan, planning about what's the thing you need to do before you go to meeting, and then a discovery call, which is more to understanding what's the things that you still don't understand or you still want to know more, other than all the market research that you did. Then you just go with first meeting, which is pitching and really sit down with a partner to talk about that. Then after meeting, then you will need to follow up your meeting. Lastly, close your sales. This is just the first part of sales funnel. Second part, you will go with account management. Okay? So we're going to focus one by one. The questions that you, before you start the entire process, you can ask yourself, 
what is your sales timeline? How much time you actually left? Or what partner you are targeting? Because in PD for IGV, you have financial partner, OP, LP and schools, right? And also look into how can you be more project driven? Which project, which need partner? How many partners you need for every single project? Lastly, just look into overall, what is your goal? So after you sort out all this big picture uh, thingy, then you go with the process itself. So first, understanding and define your market. So if you look into this chart, it's very important for you to know that uh, it's separate into four parts and then it go with a circle. First thing, you need to know the upper part, which is history and also internal trade. Okay, history and internal trade means every single thing that you need to know about your project. Okay, how many projects, which batch already, how many times you, you run it before, how was the MOI, different, different uh, history of the project's execution until now. Second part, internal trade, is the current execution itself. Okay, current execution in the sense of um, what, why we actually continue the, uh, the projects, how is the current project execution, how many EPs already approved, who are we targeting? Who is our IR partner? What is different between this project and the previous projects? Okay, then you thoroughly understand about your internal, then you go to external. Then you can start to answer the kind of question of which industry are you focusing on and why, based on all the understanding of your projects. And also list down a list of uh, company from the industry itself. Okay, then you just follow the flow. So second, prospecting. Prospecting means you need to choose, uh, pick one company, which is from your understanding part and then you ask all these questions what does this company exist what is their bottom line bottom line means what is their product or what is the things that is driving their revenue stream what are external trades that is affecting their business where do they actually have the greatest potential for funding lastly what is something unique about Isaac can actually uh, give it to them so a lot of people have that kind of misunderstanding uh, about prospecting me I need to come out with a list of companies that is potential so that's a very wrong concept you have to know Coming out a list of potential partners, it comes from the first step, which is understanding the market. Okay, Prospecting means with this list of company, you need to start to do research about every single company based on these gui uh, guiding questions that you have. Okay, This is very crucial because all the inputs that you get here in prospecting, it's going to be a very important information for you to build your proposal. And this all information is going to be the information to actually decide whether they are dead account or not. So take note and take note, every single company that you want to target, you have to prospect them one by one. Third step, after you've done all the research, now you need to look into initial approach. Who is the person or profile most likely to make the final decision when it comes to um, taking up your projects itself? Okay, so the same, use all the company research. Right now you pick another company as, as well, then you have to answer this question. Based on the projects that you're going to pitch, who in the company are you going to target? You need to be very specific, just like the example show here. Who is the person and what is the title of the person? Okay? Another thing you can look into is who can be your referral? Who can actually help you to reach that person? Lastly, how would you make the approach? Email, cold call, or networking event, etc. Which after you define this, step four, which one of the most crucial parts that people don't know, which you have to plan before you go to meeting. Okay, so with all the understanding internally about your project and externally about uh, this company itself, right now, identify your goal, how much you want to get target from them and who you want to target. And then describe in your own words the customer business. Okay, understand about what it's the company report, vision, mission, and etc. Then second, look into your current projects that you're going to sell to them. Is this project a solution based on their pain? Okay. And then you have to always remember when you're pitching a project, you're actually pitching a solution to solve a conflict, which is the pains that they are facing. Okay, then lastly, you connect all the dots. How can we actually be a partner to value each other? How can uh, my project as a solution to solve your pain and why you should be my partner? Okay, and then you also need to come out action step, how to follow up from there. Okay, so that's pretty much uh, the first process mapping 1.0. If you have any questions, feel free to just put down in the comment section below and then we will reply you accordingly. Okay, so right now let's go with process mapping 2.0. So let's re uh, revisit again the, the, the process mapping chart. So if you can see for the first four uh, column, we already did just now. 
Okay, so one thing to remind you again and again, this four step is super, super important because a lot of people always have impressions that I cannot get this information or I do not need to do a lot of research as long as I secure a meeting that I can go with it. That's a very wrong concept, which I will show you later why. Okay, so now let's go with step five, which is discovery course. Okay, so you did a lot of research, right, from step one to step four. Then one thing I want to remind you is that maybe what you think you know, it's just like this ice uh, cube you know maybe you are just knowing um, this small portion about the company itself that's a lot of things that you might not know that is under the water so before you go to meeting and your pre-planning plan is ready that's very important for you to also ask yourself what kind of question would you ask your contact okay but one thing to take note in here when you are asking about what kind of question you want to actually ask the, the, the partner before the meeting you have to look into your solution Okay, do not ask that kind of questions that it's very surface or it's still trying to understand more. But your understanding should come from whether your solution is solving that pain or not. Okay, so ask that kind of questions that's reflecting back to your uh, solution, which is your project, but not entirely generally about their company and things like that. Okay, so a list of questions is done, which is then you can start to go meeting already. Okay, so just now I was mentioning why research is very important is based on data and research, how can you actually secure a success meeting or secure a success close deal? 70% of the effort, it's all come from market research. Okay, once this part is complete and done, you are 70% secure your, your sales already. Okay, then only pitching or meeting, it's the 20% based on the decision factor. Okay, then another 10% is the external factors that we cannot control about their own stuff and things like that. Okay. So remember, 70% is all on your research itself in terms of success. So right now, look into meeting and pitch. One thing you have to know as well, this 20% is actually a decision-making shortcut. Okay, 70% sounds like, oh, people are convincing, they are actually interested, that's why they meet you. Okay, then here you go with your pitching skill, how to convince them, how to negotiate with them to make sure that you can get 90% secure, which is really a date account. So master of the art of pitching you have to know nothing will ever prepare you enough for what is going to come out during the meeting okay so a lot of people are asking me should i dry run the the the, the pitching or should i actually uh, go through again and again re memorize everything no the answer is no because you have to know meeting is a conversation that is where understanding is super super important when you have thorough analysis and understand about what is going to happen in your project then you should be able to answer all the questions in that meeting itself, okay? You are there not to present, you are there to have conversation and convince your partner, okay? So, three most important things that you need to take note, your capacity to engage into a conversation, remember, it's a conversation. Second, hardcore knowledge of your organization or product, thorough understanding about your pro product, remember, history and current internal trade. Third, business understanding of a potential partner. Then you go with the second part, external trade. Your prospecting is all the homework that you did, you're gonna showcase in this pitching, okay? Especially in the meeting itself. So, one thing about meeting you have to always know is that your partner it's gonna judge you in your in, in their first impression, okay? So you have to always remember to make sure you can pitch successfully. All you need to do and all partner care is your attitude, okay? If you are very excited and sure about it, they will be as well. You have to show how much you are, you are actually convinced about your product, how much you actually feel confident about the things that you want to pitch to them. Second, reinforce your message, okay? When I say I want to sell project A to you, then all the things that I'm going to talk about, it's going to be project A. Bonus three, customize, okay? For example, right now you already sell them, you actually want to sell them this thing, but you realize that they want more than that. So, it's very important for you to customize based on how much you understand about your, your project itself. Then, another thing is also, you need to make sure that you pitch Isaac based on different sectors. So, there are several things that you can look into, what is the things that you need to prepare. Last, uh, certain tips about pitching. So, five do's about pitching is you have to always engage into a dialogue, okay? And avoid monologue. That is where I was mentioning when we talk about pitching, it's not about uh, presentation, okay? It's about conversation. Then, build out the golden circle. Why, how, what, 
Third, data driven. Okay, always show data. How much my project did impact the society? How much EP is coming in? Fourth, trust isn't given. It should be earned. Okay, so a lot of people went for first meeting and they just don't know anything. Okay, the moment that you tell your partner you don't know anything, that's all. People will not actually uh, give you trust on that because you don't even do homework. You know. Then lastly, keep it real. So do not try to hide information from your partner. If you realize something that is bad about your project or you have some weakness of your project and your partner is asking that, do not hide it. You have to let them see the reality of your project as well. Okay? Then, to, to actually avoid uh, certain mis-expectation or uh, that kind of uh, lo not long-term partnership. Okay? So five, don't. First, don't get boxed or screwed. Remember, don't script. That's very important. I always mention about that. It's a conversation. And then, don't complicate Isaac. Okay? So, there's a lot of things you all know about Isaac, right? LDA, Isaac way, our different product. So, you have to only know, stick with the objective. You go there, it's not going to tell them everything about Isaac, but you're going to tell them the solutions that you want to sell. And you will just briefly tell them that I'm from Isaac. It's a youth friend organization. Then, Another thing, don't underestimate the value of our organization, okay? Be very clear what's the things that you sell to them. What is your value proposition? Leadership development, EPs, my project impact. So don't use negotiation skill as a way of uh, push, uh, let your partner to push about how much they actually want to be your partner. If they don't mean to be, don't actually uh, let them to underestimate the things that you want to sell to them, okay? Don't use exact term. Don't use LC, don't use EP, they are not going to know, okay? You can use local chapter, local community, volunteers, international volunteers. Lastly, don't fall into the fluffy trap. Why does it so important is because partner will not actually want to hear uh, how much impact you want to gain, okay? Impact means to them, you have to show them tangible data, okay? When your moment, you tell them that I'm going to do a lot of impact in my community, the things that they will ask you next is, so what does impact mean? Okay, try to avoid fluffy trap. Don't tell them that I want to do leadership development. No, show them what does leadership development means. 10 EP, how can they improve? Through data, through context. That's the things that can convince your partner. Okay, so step seven, follow up. You have to know after you have your first meeting, then it's going to be uh, the time where it's 90% confirmed already whether they are going to be your partner or not. This is the crucial golden period, okay? Make sure you follow up meeting, are able to set during first meeting. So while the end of the meeting, you give them a call to action, uh, very clear from both party, and then set the next meeting together, right after with them, okay? Then, send, once you go back, send follow up email within 24 hours. Within, okay, so until the next meeting itself, the best range is one week, okay? First meeting, one week, then you go for second meeting. So in that one week, you have to make sure internal alignment is done. Sit down with your IGV, tell what your partner wants. Okay, then internally align. When you go to second up meeting, it's going to be closest ready. Make sure MOU is ready, all the deliverables is ready, then you can close it in second meeting. Okay, so step eight, it's about closing. So in closing, it's about uh, how you can synergize with IGV and FL to come out MOU, how to get MOU signed. Then lastly, it's to make sure that uh, the payment, how the payment should go, understand the SOP of payment, and if it's NCR, how can we actually open the opportunity in XPA as well. Yep, so that's all for the entire process mapping under the closing part. Today, we are not going to talk about account management. I will cover in this next space. So, um, if you have any questions, same. Feel free to put down there, especially for uh, process mapping 2.0. So, just put down there what's the question you have. And if you see any question there, we will just reply on the spot. Okay, so to end the whole space, I think the few tips for you to take away is you have to, as a PD person, you have to invest your time strategically, okay? You, no matter how much time you have, you have to make sure that you invite in the right place. You actually invest in the, in the right partner or profile as well. Second, look into SOP for partner, okay? Everything is really checked down in the SOP for partner. Ask from your HOD or uh, actually search it from WNC output, okay? Lastly, again and again, I always say, you have to be internally driven and externally relevant. PD role is very crucial to understand what is happening internally and able to map the external opportunity 
to make sure that we are providing a very quality and value partnership in between Isaac and external. Okay? So, that's all for this space. I hope you really get something out of it. Um, it's actually a recap of the session that I did with most of the uh, LC functional visit. So, if you have any questions, feel free to connect, uh, just contact me. We can have a conversation over there or if you need any resources, feel free to reach out to me as well. That's all for you, for, from me. I will see you next time. Thanks.